Tell me if you're running. Oh, you're good right now. Okay. <clears throat> and if anyone would like, uh, there are, are more handouts and cards in the back if you're interested. I'll just uh, put these over here for now. My name is Allie Barker. I run Chugach Farm up in Chickaloo. And we are a small scale, diversified farm. We focus on raising vegetables grown um, way beyond organic standards and nutrient dense food. That's the most important thing to us. You heard, um, you heard the last folks talking about regenerative ag and that's really uh, a core thing for us. And you're probably starting to hear that term more, um, making a difference with regenerative ag versus kind of the traditional style with plows and tractors, and um, which is depleting the soil. Our version of growing food is feeding the microbes, feeding the bacteria, feeding the soil, um, building soil, taking care of the soil. Because when we take care of the soil, we're taking care of ourselves and our gut, um, our microbes and bacteria. So. <clears throat> We focus on growing diversified vegetables, all vegetables, um, uh, primarily or more so uh, specialized uh, Asian hardy greens and arugula and spinach, mustards, um, carrots, beets, snow apple turnips. Um, we do a lot of fermentation. And so a lot of the stuff that I grow goes into my fermentation business, which now, thanks to Julie, you know the benefits of all of that. <laughs> and uh, you can sign up for uh, CSA Share, which is a community supported ferments program. I started the first one in Alaska, so it's similar to a CSA Share, but it's just ferments every week. And you might be thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna get sauerkraut every week, but that's not what it is. There's probably 20 or 30 different things that uh, we make, including sauerkraut and kimchi, uh, but lacto-fermented carrots and broccoli and cauliflower, and also non-brassica ferments um, as well. So beet, horseradish beet ferment. I also do beet kvass, um, and then brew kombucha. Then, um, let's see, <clears throat> what else? Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of the diversified vegetables, those are grown on the farm, and, uh, and then sold um, through the last 11 years have been at market and to restaurants uh, and then I've had a small CSA. And like Sam was saying, most of that um, because of the market was me taking it and going to Anchorage. And honestly, I'm tired of that. <laughs> And so I'm trying to make a shift with that. I feel like there's enough people in the Valley now who are wanting that, that um, reaching out to find more customers in the Valley. So um, in addition to the diversified vegetables, we also raise chickens, pigs, and ducks. And we do pig shares and um, sell duck eggs and chicken eggs. And uh, really kind of the premise of what we do, uh, like I said, we're small scale, so we grow a lot of food intensively on less than an acre. And we're able to do that through, um, you know, having good crop rotation, cover cropping, and using animals for fertility, rotating animals. Um, similar, I'd like to, well, Joel Salatin, when he was at our place, called us a little miniature polyface farm, which is pretty amazing. But we're trying to replicate, if you haven't heard of him, he's like one of my heroes, check out polyface farms. He's really this leader, this guy who's pushing this regenerative ag movement saying, uh, with animals we can, our farms will survive, we can grow more food, we can be more productive, we can feed more people, and everything is healthier. It's that synergistic relationship between all of those things. So um, on a really small scale, it's what we're trying to do. Uh, the difference, what makes us unique, um, is that we are 100% off-grid, so everything we do is solar power uh, and wood, wood powered. So, and we don't use artificial lights and never have. Um, so I'll need to run home to load the wood stoves in a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I know, Sarah's shaking her head. It's a little crazy, it is, yep. Um, but it's also pretty exciting to, to kind of make these, uh, you know, we figured out these systems over the last uh, 18 years 
and um, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. So we use traditional techniques, uh, including fermentation and a root cellar to, uh, that's the primary way that we store and put up food for the year. We don't have a refrigerator. Um, we do have some freezers that run off of the solar system, but primarily the root cellar. And can you say about what's upcoming with your website? Yeah. 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 So we also have other things like I'm also an herbalist and so and we use the sauna for drying herbs and curing plants in the fall and curing root crops. Uh, I do teach a little bit as well and hopefully I'm going to get more into that. The big thing that we're changing that we're shifting to and if you got one of these handouts um, you will see is uh, we're currently um, it's a really exciting transition for us. We're working with a company called Barn to Door and transitioning to um, an online marketing. So we will have an online store up probably in the next two weeks and a brand new website within eight weeks. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to go online. You'll be able to see all the items that we have from vegetables, ferments, kombucha, um, herbal medicine, urban medicinal vinegars, eggs, uh, pig shares, everything will be on there. You'll be able to click what you want, purchase it or pay it pickup, and then come to Palmer and have a pickup at 203 Kombucha, Tuesday or Friday night from five to 6.30, that's it. So what we're trying to do is make it easy for you. Um, and yeah, so we're looking for you all to spread the word to other people. Um, so hopefully this works and we can also reduce our carbon footprint by not going to Anchorage, Anchorage as much. So that's the big shift for us. The website's a little bare bones right now, but it will look pretty good in, um, in another month and a half or so. Yeah, and we'll send that out when, when, um, when those guys are live. And I just want to say when Allie calls me up and she says, I've got a uh, carrot ferment and I have uh, the classic crowd and I have some of this and some of that. And she's like, what do you want? I'm like, just bring it all. <laughs> so even if there's a vegetable that you're not familiar with, just try it. I mean, there's, there's recipes everywhere. And um, I mean, her stuff is just amazing. So yeah, definitely take advantage of that. Thank you. I, I would also say kind of, and Jules kind of touched on this, you know, when it comes to ferments and that kind of stuff, it isn't, you don't need to eat a bowl of ferments. Like I tell people like find, find a ferment, like literally a forkful a day, like that's it. Mm -hmm. And so that really helped because some people are like, I don't know, you know, and I'm like, you don't need to eat a lot, just a little bit yeah. every day. In fact, it's better if you start really yeah, slowly exactly. because you're changing your, mm -hmm. your gut microbiome. Yeah. And most of the time I see that like, you really have to do it slowly over time. That's a healthy way to do it. Otherwise yeah. you wipe everything out and have a couple of bad yeah. days in the bathroom. <laughs> and you know, really all of this, this whole fermentation craze that you hear about everywhere. I mean, um, there's a lot of truth to it really. And like, for me, it's, it's changed my life. It's healed my gut. It's, you know, I'm a celiac. I had all these like, all these issues growing up with different things that Western medicine just totally missed. Mm -hmm. And um, that was this transition to like herbalism and fermenting food and bone broth and all of these things that I'm actually super committed to doing that have changed my life. And because of that, that's something that we've been doing that I want to share with other people that we've been sharing with other people. So, um, yeah, I don't know if there are any questions. I have one. Yes. I have people that will reach the fermented because yeah. they live alone and their food's gonna go bad or die and so they eat the whole thing in a week. So a good <laughs> ferment that's made properly won't go bad for a long time. Okay, that it really okay. shouldn't. Yeah. You know, there are certain things like carrot ferment which will you'll get certain bacteria sooner, but there are tricks to actually keeping it okay. with uh, something called a cartouche. Like there are things you can do on top of it to keep it. But yeah, they should last for uh, you know as long as it takes to eat a spoonful or two per meal yeah <laughs> so and in Allie's uh, spare time she's also one of the keys behind our uh, avalanche forecasting right here oh good so that's her that's that's in her spare. published at 7 a.m. <laughs> yes that, that, that's her spare time so not only did she do an avalanche forecast PT and yeah. now she's and then she here came here today already <laughs> so thanks Allie. thank you all thank for you. coming out